Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Retro Game Hunting here on Player One Start. So to change pace just a little bit, I decided to go ahead and start at one of the Goodwills in my area, which usually doesn't offer too much except for a variety of clothing that, well, I'm never gonna buy. But after making my way past everything, I find the DVD and video game section that usually has some stuff thrown in there that maybe I'm looking for. Looking back through this footage, I completely glazed over this Millennium Falcon wall art that was down here in between all the shelves that, depending on the price, I might have actually picked up, but I, like I said, it was just out of my field of view, so I'm just now seeing it in my footage. And when I returned, it was long gone, so. Anyway, there was nothing really on this wall of DVDs, but over by the VHS area, I found their organized section of video games. In terms of what I find at a Goodwill, I don't usually find things pre-PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2. And as you can see here, there's a lot of PS2, Wii titles, Xbox 360, PS3. Not really all the titles I'm usually looking for. But if they're cheap, I will definitely pick some of them up. So I decided to go ahead and browse through them and see if there were any that caught my interest. And the first game that caught my interest was Tekken 4. I don't think I have this one, so I decided to go ahead and check to make sure the disc was in there. And yeah, looks like I'll be getting this one. Burnout 3 also caught my eye, but I think I already have it. Even though it may be network compatible, I'm not quite too sure if that's going to work without the internet servers that are probably down for it. Looking through their selection of Wii titles, I didn't really see anything that either I wanted or I didn't already have. Uh, most of them were just titles I didn't want. A lot of sports games, dance games, even a weight loss game. Eh, maybe I should look into that. This case that said Ultimate Codes and PlayStation 2 caught my eye, and I found out that it is a cheat code disc specifically for Tekken 4. I like that it says 100% unofficial on the corner. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before as a standalone product, so I decided to go ahead and get it with the Tekken 4 just to see what it's actually going to be like. I did notice that the disc is not in the best shape, but for the price that it is, I decided to go ahead and give it a chance. Continuing on past the Guitar Hero games, I did see this game called Nicktoons Unite. I also saw Madden 06, which I don't have really any interest in. This Monster 4x4 Masters of Metal game looked a little bit interesting, but it turns out I already got that at a different location. And yeah, sadly the rest are just a bunch of sports games or games that don't really have any value to me, so I decided to pass on them. That is until I saw these two sitting on top. Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories caught my eye because I don't think I have this for PlayStation 2. I think it's included in one of the compilations I bought, but definitely didn't mind picking this up for the PlayStation 2. And even though this isn't a video game, this movie caught my eye. R2-D2 Beneath the Dome. This looked very interesting to me, so I decided to go ahead and get it as well. And lastly, I saw Monopoly for the Wii. I'm not quite sure why, but Monopoly titles on retro systems seem to hold their value a bit more higher than average than some of the other games of this type, so I decided to go ahead and get this as well, as it wasn't too expensive. I did a check of the other side of this case just in case a few of the video games had migrated over, but it turns out they did not. So it turns out I'm actually done with this Goodwill, and we'll go ahead and head on to another store. So now moving on to a store that specifically just sells used games, movies, and other electronics. This is part of the same franchise that I featured in my previous retro game hunting videos, and I most recently featured this specific store when I found my Atari Jaguar. But anyway, as soon as you walk in, you are greeted to their used PlayStation 4 games. Since those are a bit too new for the type of videos I do on here, I decided to go ahead and skip past those and walk directly to the back where they keep all of their cartridge games. This first case has a lot of Super Nintendo and N64 games, but I noticed that the case next to it seems a bit more empty than usual. It looks like they're reorganizing everything to make things easier to see. That is a lot more evident when you see their Nintendo case. Man, this thing is much more organized than it usually is. It actually makes games like the first Mega Man here a lot more visible than usual. That's because previously it was just thrown in with a whole bunch of other games, and all their duplicate games that are now stacked together were previously just all randomly thrown in there, so I'm glad that they decided to take the time to organize this. But as you can see, they do have a variety of titles, but nothing is really sticking out to me too much, mainly because every single one of the games that are in this case are games that I already own. Now that's a problem I didn't think I would encounter so soon in my game collecting journey, but as I've been very successful in finding a lot of the titles that I actually want for each system, this is becoming more and more commonplace and something I have to deal with each time I come in here. 
Moving back to the bare bones case, you can see Gradius 3 here, Complete in Box, and Mickey's Challenge. Can't really make out what the other few games were, but I don't really collect Complete in Box games from these stores because they are quite expensive. Looking at their loose saddle offerings, I can see True Lies here, for some reason that's $20. Not really sure if that's really worth it or not. Looking through the more full case, I can see that there are a lot of titles here. Again, not really seeing anything rare or unique that I don't already have in my collection. That is, until I went to the second shelf and saw... Mega Man X3. And I struggled with this for quite a long time, but I decided eventually not to even ask to see if I can even get it discounted because of the cosmetic damage. For games that collectible, I really want to get one that's in good condition as it'll keep its value throughout the time it's in my collection. I don't know very many people who want this game that would buy it in that condition, but I did go back there the next week and it is indeed gone, so somebody bought it. Hopefully they don't try to recreate the label or get a replacement label, and then try to sell it as an original at a much higher price. I have a fair amount of N64 titles, but again, I kind of have most of the games that I really want for that system, and since I'm not really putting this system as a priority for having a complete collection, I haven't bought a lot of these sports titles yet, so there isn't really anything in here that is a priority for me to get today. In the next case, a few neat things they have are some complete inbox NES titles, as well as some complete Sega CD, Super Nintendo, and N64 titles. And strangely enough, I saw a couple of brand new titles in here. It appears that these are compilation cartridges based on the company name that is on the box. So they have a Jaleco Brawlers pack and Data East collection. On the top shelf, there are some more unremarkable Super Nintendo titles complete in box, but there are a couple of 3DO completed in box titles back there, both just a tad bit outside my price range, so I decided to pass on them. And on the other side of the case, I saw the only two Virtual Boy offerings I have in here. I don't have 3D Tetris yet, but I'm gonna wait and see if I can find it at a more decent price. Since these aren't too in demand, I think these will be here for quite a while. And as I stated before, this store also sells an assortment of used electronics, so there is no shortage of vintage systems in here. But as you keep going up this shelf, you'll see things that are even older. And all the way here at the top, I'm not quite sure what this controller is. I don't think I've ever seen it before. Then they have a carrying case for the Sega Dreamcast. And at the very top, we see some of the oldest systems, including the Sega Genesis with 32X, Super Nintendo. Moving on to another shelf, we see that they have their portable games organized here. This is their collection of Sega Game Gear games, which I do collect because I have a Sega Game Gear, but I don't really find myself playing it that often as I can't capture video game footage from it, at least not easily. Below that they have some of their more unique Game Boy games and Game Boy Advance games, which I can capture because I can use my Game Boy player on my GameCube. And below that you can see they have some PC Engine games, which is funny because this is also the store that I bought my PC Engine from, and these games were here when I purchased the PC Engine over a year ago. And it appears they have some imported Neo Geo games here. That's interesting. For their less valuable or throwaway titles for the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, or just original Game Boy, they have them there in this series of drawers that you can just leaf through at your leisure. I don't think there's anything above $5 in here. Right next to those, they also have their bins here with their kind of throwaway titles for the Atari 2600, and I even spotted a Magnavox Odyssey 2, and a Mattel and Television game in there as well. Next to that are their bargain bin Sega Genesis games. There were a lot of sports titles in here, and since I was doing my ultimate Sega Genesis review after this, I decided to go ahead and leaf through these and pick up a few of them. For their more valuable Sega Genesis games, they were here in this case. Some of the ones that caught my eye here were Chase HQ, as well as Lethal Enforcers. Down below I saw Street Fighter 2, Jeopardy, Doom for the 32X, Eternal Champions, and Shove It. This Mortal Kombat 2 control pad caught my eye because I didn't really know for sure what it actually was. Down below they actually had a Mega Drive cartridge that I picked up, and that was Zoom. They had a couple of loose Mega Drive cartridges as well. And below that they had their Sega Master System titles, but nothing there really stuck out to me. Alright, but getting away from the cartridge games, here are some of their PS1 offerings. And again, this is not a system that I'm collecting heavily for at the moment, but I'm sure when I start featuring this system more in my videos, I'm going to have to start collecting more games for it. What I'm looking for on this shelf are some of the Sega CD and Sega Saturn games they have. And there were a few that interested me on this shelf, including The Adventures of Batman and Robin, Final Fight, Corpse Killer, Night Trap, which I previously had passed on, and for $10 cheaper than the last store I was in, I will definitely take that one. 
And even though these are loose, which I usually don't like buying, I'm kind of running low on time on collecting titles to feature in the Ultimate Sega Genesis review, as I'm going to have to eventually move on to the Sega CD. Well, we've made it through quite a bit of this store, and I haven't really shown everything, but we are running out of time for this video. So again, it looks like I'm gonna have to split this trip into multiple parts. So far, it's been a fairly successful trip, and I have been very happy with the things I have found thus far. So that said, that's gonna actually wrap it up for this video. In the next part of Retro Game Hunting, we'll actually wrap up this trip and show you everything else I found on this Retro Gaming run. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please remember to click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.